Welcome to the Canadian Math Kangaroo Contest demo video. This one is going to be on geometry for grades 7 to 8. Today, we will briefly go over the perimeter and area formulae and work on four practice problems following the introduction. Please have a piece of paper and pencil ready, and be sure to hit the pause button whenever you want to give yourself some more time to think. Perimeter is the distance around a two-dimensional shape. The perimeter formula of a rectangle is the sum of the length plus the width multiplied by 2. The perimeter formula of a square is 4 times the side length. The perimeter formula of a triangle is all sides added together, or a plus b plus c. The perimeter formula of a circle is pi multiplied by the diameter, or 2 pi multiplied by the radius, given that the diameter is 2 times the radius. Now that we have a better understanding of the perimeter of the basic geometric shapes, please pause the video and find the perimeter of these following shapes. Now you can check if you did the sample problems correctly. Be sure to include the units. Great work! We will now move on to the area. The area is the amount of space that a two-dimensional surface take up. The area formula of a rectangle is length times width. The area formula of a square is side length multiplied by side length, which is side length squared. The area formula of a triangle is base times height divided by 2. The area formula of a circle is pi times the radius squared. The area formula of a circle sector is theta, or the degree of the circle sector, divided by 360 degrees, multiplied by pi times the radius squared. Now that we have a better understanding of the area of basic geometric shapes, please pause the video and find the area of these following shapes. Now you can check whether if you did the sample problems correctly. Be sure to include the units. Great work! We will now go over some practice problems. Please pause the video and try the problems with us. So the first question we're going to look at is about perimeter. The start on the picture is constructed by 12 identical small equilateral triangles. The perimeter of the star is 36 centimeters, and it's asking for what's the perimeter of the dark hexagon. So first we notice that all small triangles in the diagram are equilateral and congruent meaning that all the sides in the triangle are the same. And we can assume that side A. And we're given the perimeter of the star is 36 centimeters, which corresponds with 12 line segments that make up the perimeter. Therefore, we can set up the, the equation that 12 times A equals 36 centimeters. And all we need to do is to solve this equation. And since we have 12 times A equals 36 centimeters, we can divide both sides by 12. And we have 12 times A divided by 12 centimeters equals 36 divided by 12 centimeters. And then we get A equals 3 centimeters. So we have just found that every line segment in this diagram is equal to 3 centimeters. But we're asked to find the perimeter of the shaded hexagon. The hexagon is made of 6 line segments. Therefore, the perimeter of the hexagon is equal to 3 times 6 or 18 centimeters. Now we can go back to the original problem and we see that 18 centimeters is choice C and we're done. Now we'll solve problem number two. On the diagram, three squares and four circles are constructed as shown. What parts of the outer square is shaded? So to solve this question, we can start by finding the area of the outer square using the radius of the circle, and we'll name that r. And as we can see here, the radius of the circle is equal to the half length of the smallest square. And using the half length of the smallest square, we can then find the half length of the second largest square using the Pythagoras theorem. So let's start by making this a triangle. The length of this is going to be r because the bottom one is also r. Because using this line here, we know that this here is 180 degree. And so this leaves this angle 45 degree. And the top angle here, it's 90 degree divided by 2. 
So it's going to be also be 45 degree. From this, we can see that this is an isosceles triangle. Therefore, the both of the length has to be equal. That's why the horizontal and the vertical length equals to R. So using this, we can use the Pythagoras theorem a squared plus b squared equals c squared to find the half length of the second largest square. So a squared plus b squared equals c squared, which will give us r squared plus r squared equals c squared. And c squared will equal to 2r squared, which means that c is equal to the square root of 2r. And this half length of the second smallest triangle will be equal to the square root of 2r. And using this exact same method, we can find the half length of the largest square. So this line, we put a line here, and this line is going to be the square root of 2r because this is still an isosceles triangle, and therefore these two lengths are equal. So using that, we can use the Pythagoras theorem again, which is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And in this case, it's going to be the square root of 2r squared plus square root of 2r squared equals to c squared which will mean that c squared is equal to 4r squared. So then c will be the square root of 4r squared, which will be 2r. Now we know that the half length of the largest triangle is 2r, which means the length of the largest triangle is 4r, and so that we can use this to find the area. So the area is going to be 4r times 4r, which is 16r squared. So it gives us that the area of the outer square equals to 16r squared. After finding the area of the largest square, we can then find the area of the shaded region. And first, we do that by simplifying the shaded region. And like we said earlier, this line here is 180 degree, and this angle here is 45 degree because these two angles are equal because the square is 9 degree. So each of the corner of the smallest square, there's two pieces of these 45 degree circle next to them. So if we put them in there, we can find that the shaded region is the smallest square. So next, we can find the area of the smallest square, which we know that the half length is r because we labeled that earlier. So that means the length of the smallest square is 2r. So 2r times 2r equals 4r squared. So the area of the smallest square is 4r squared. Now we know that the area of the outer square is 16r squared, and the shaded area is equal to the area of the smallest square and that the smallest square is 4r squared, we can then find the answer to this question using ratio. So let's put large square to the small square. So it's going to be 16r squared to 4r squared. After that, we can take out the r square. So it's going to be 16 to 4. And then we can simplify it since we know that 16 is a multiple of 4. So it's going to be 4 to 1. And that's going to give us the answer A because four of the small square is equals to one of the big square and one of the small square is shaded. That's mean one fourth of the large square is shaded. So that's how you solve problem two. For problem three, the question states that there are four tangent congruent circles of radius six centimeters inscribed in a rectangle as shown in the diagram. If P is a vertex of the rectangle and Q and R are two points of tangency, the touching points of the circles, what is the area of the triangle PQR? Feel free to pause the video and try to solve this question on your own. When a circle is inscribed in a square, the side length of the square is equivalent to the diameter of the circle. That is also two times the radius. Each point of tangency between the circle and the square bisects each side length into two equal parts. Because in this diagram, four circles are all tangent to each other, we can imagine that there are four squares with circles inscribed in them in a row. Given this diagram, choosing side QP as the base is the most straightforward length to find. The height would then be the height of the rectangle as the height of a triangle must be perpendicular to its base. The length QP is equivalent to three times the radius because all of the circles have a radius of six centimeters. The base is six centimeters times three equals 18 centimeters. The height of the triangle, also the height of the rectangle, is equivalent to two times the radius and is six centimeters times two, which is 12 centimeters. Plugging these values into the formula for the area of a triangle gives us 
18 centimeters times 12 centimeters all over 2, which yields 108 centimeters squared. Okay, and here is the last problem that we're going to discuss today. Uh, the problem is, the logo shown is made entirely from semicircle arcs of radius 2 cm, 4 cm, or 8 cm. And it is asking you what fraction of the logo is shaded. Let's get into the solution now. The shaded region in the logo is equal to the black region plus the red region in the right figure. And the red region is equal to the green region because their radius are the same. Also, the semicircles made up by the black region and the green region is same as the blue region because their radius is also the same. Therefore, we can know that the shaded region in the logo is equal to red plus black, which is equal to green plus black, and that is equal to blue. Also, we know that the logo is equal to the white region plus the green, red region plus the sum of black and green region, which is equal to the white region plus the red region plus the blue region. Then our logo and the shaded region becomes this. Also we can know that the radius of shaded region is 4 cm, and the area of this circle of this radius is 4 times 4 times pi, which equals to 16 pi cm squared which means the area of this shaded semicircle is 8 pi centimeters squared. Similarly, the radius of logo is 8 centimeters. Then the area of this circle with this radius is 8 times 8 times pi, which equals to 64 pi centimeters squared, which means the area of the logo is 32 pi centimeters squared. Now, going back to the question, the fraction would equal to the area of shaded region divided by the area of logo, which equals to 8 pi centimeters squared divided by 32 pi centimeters squared, which equals to 1 quarter, which means our answer should be B. Thank you for joining us today. We hope that you had fun learning and problem solving with us. Thank you.